Good morning, everybody. I am so happy that you're here. And if you're brand new, today I've got a how-to. And if you're not brand new, the dog, you know that my dogs bark. Hush, please. No, no. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, welcome, everyone. So here I have some immune gummies and their elderberry. I wish I had elderberry growing on my um, property, and I think I need to plant some because you don't know what I paid for this, and I don't remember what I paid for it exactly, but it was way too much. In the past, I've just made elderberry syrup, and I went ahead and I'm going to do that and show you today um, how I do it. And there are lots of ways to do it. This is how I do it. <laughs> um, let me tell you about elderberry here. I wrote some notes, so let me... There you go. So, um, black elderberry. I got this off of WebMD. So, you know, mainstream. It's not um, some, you know, lady in a forest <laughs> telling you about herbs. But not that that's a bad thing. I like them, too. Okay, from WebMD. It says here, black elderberry stimulates the immune system's chemical responses, bringing relief from flu and possibly... Um, shortening the duration. They also help colds by reducing symptoms. So, you know, there's that. And if you can keep it down, you know, gummies, syrup, which I'm going to make, or whatever, it could really benefit you. Um, you should use black elderberries. You should use organic where you can find it. You know, I think that's the case with everything. What, use the best you can get. So you want, always, always want to cook your elderberries before consuming them for anything. Elderberries have a chemical in them that will really mess up your belly if you don't. I can't think of another food that's like that, but I'm sure there are others. Um, so you could make, you, yourself at home, you could make syrup, gummies, even popsicles. And I think popsicles would be really welcome when the little ones have, you know, sore throat and stuff like that. That feels good maybe. So there's that. And then it says here, with school going back, and some of you I hear are already back at school, my uh, part of the world, the kids go back on the 28th of August which is the earliest ever. They've always gone back the first week of September after or one day before, well, the Friday before Labor Day. So anyway, with kids going back to close quarters like classrooms and the school bus, whatever few kids might have some little thing is going to explode. You know what I mean? They're going to share the love because that's how close they're packed in there. Um, have you ever seen a school bus go by in the winter and the windows are all fogged up? Yeah, that's breath. The breath coming off the kids and their hair steaming if it's cold. But anyway, um, they're also getting things like extra sugar from like classroom treats. Uh, they're eating in the lunchroom, a common place. You know, they're trading back and forth. You want my biscuit or, you know, whatever. Um they're having a decreased sleep schedule, probably. They're used to being able to roll out of bed maybe a little bit later. They're used to staying up later. It's an, it's an adjustment. And then there's stress that can play into that, too. You know, kids that um, are stressed out over whose clique they're in, what grades they're going to make, did they get their favorite teacher, are they on the right bus, you know, just everything that, you know, so... The cold and flu season cometh. Beware. Now let me show you how I'm going to make my syrup. And you can make those popsicles or gummies the same. Don't forget. So this is Puyallup Valley, and that's not far down the road. Puyallup Valley Farms, Pacific Northwest, raw blackberry honey. All right, here we go. Before I get started, I want to say, because I didn't yet, and I should have, that I am not a licensed care provider. I am not a licensed nutritionist. I am not anything but a mom sharing another mom's uh, link for a recipe. So, happyhealthymama.com, homemade elderberry syrup recipes, blah, blah, blah. And I'll, I'll link that so you don't have to feel, you know, what did she say? So, here's what I'm going to use. And I, you already saw the honey. I'm going to use whole cloves, 
I'm going to use one cinnamon stick and a teaspoon of ginger. And so they're already ready to go in this. I'm gonna use one cup of the berries. Oh, I should have said, wait a minute, let's go back here. I wanted real ginger and I typically have it, but I'm out. Wait a minute, let me check my freezer. All right, I'm gonna take 12. <laughs> I need to say I'm not a licensed care provider. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just sharing with you what works for my family by using whole foods. Okay, and also sharing this recipe that um, Happy Healthy Mama does have on her website. So we're gonna start with showing you what I have here. I have, is this a half a cup or a whole cup? It is a three quarters of a cup. <laughs> three quarters of a cup of black elderberries. And these are a really good brand. They come from Frontier Co-op and I love their stuff. You can get your elderberries from your own property You can, and dried elderberries. You can get them from wherever. But whatever you do, you always, always, always cook your elderberries before you use them because there's a chemical in elderberries that can make your tummy very unhappy. So the elderberries are going to go in. Well, first of all, let me just show you what I've got. Elderberries, we did that. Okay, I have... This is Puyallup Valley Farms Pacific Northwest Raw Blackberry Honey. So the Puyallup is just down the road, and I've got a whole cup of it. It's uh, really good honey. So uh, then I've got for the different herbs or spices, I've got a tablespoon of ginger-ish, one stick of cinnamon, and four whole cloves. You can use powder. Uh, ginger, you can use powdered cinnamon, you can use powdered cloves, but I like to use the whole stuff. They're easier to fish out. <laughs> you don't fish out the powder, I'm kidding. All right, so here's what you can use uh, the powder if you don't have the whole. And I keep some in my freezer, just in a baggie. Uh, let's see, what else? The honey, the spices, the elderberry, oops. And I'm using, an, I'm using a stainless steel pan. I think that the ramped up vitamin C and whatnot in the berries might make aluminum react. And I don't know that to be the case. It just makes sense to me. So I'm using a stainless steel. I'm gonna put in three cups of water. We're on a well here. So there's no chlor, there's not any fluoride. There's not any chlorine. There's nothing you know different in it except water <laughs> so um there's that don't put your honey in there the honey goes in after you've done all the cooking so now i'm going to put in the spices i'm having a hard trouble getting that out spices i mean that word that term is it spices <laughs> now i can put in the elderberries so i'm going to stir that around and put it on the stove on low let it, well, not on low at first. First, I'm going to bring it to a simmer. Then I'm going to kick it to low, and I'm going to reduce it. It's going to cook about 45 minutes. So here it is, and I've got it on medium, low medium, like that. And really, we just want to have these berries hydrate nice, uh, let release all of their goodness, and the spices to release their goodness. Again, um, things that won't react, I'm using a wooden spoon. But you be you. <laughs> I don't know. Silicone might be a good idea, too. You can't cook on silicone. You know what I mean? So I need to keep an eye on this. And, uh, howdy. <laughs> what does, doesn't that look, what is that? Oh, it's my hand. It looked like my memory glands. <laughs> I trust me, I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> If you've never bought uh, ginger before, fresh ginger at the store, it's actually a root and it often comes in like a hand. There'll be a, p a piece here and then four you know, like protrusions. And if you don't want a lot, you can just snap off one of the fingers and throw it in a um, produce bag and take it up there to pay. Or you can just take the whole thing and you can stick it in your freezer. You peel it before you use it. For this recipe, I don't know of any that you don't peel it. You can peel it so easy. You can just use the back of a spoon, and it comes right off. Now, when it's frozen, it's not so hard, easy to cut apart, so you might want to make smaller pieces 
just saying. Um, in your freezer, I mean. And let's see what else. It lasts for a long time in the freezer, I think. And in my opinion, it still smells like ginger, acts like ginger, tastes like ginger. And it's inexpensive, very inexpensive. Well, <laughs> now that prices have gone up since I bought it, who knows? And it's just starting to warm up some. Now, I put that chunk of ginger in there frozen, but it's something that thaws really, really quickly, so it doesn't take long at all and to release, to thaw and release. What else is, oh, I was gonna say, this is the perfect time to make it because it'll stay in your refrigerator in a covered jar for a few weeks, and then you just dump it and make more. You make popsicles out of it and keep the life going. I keep harping on the popsicles, but you can, or the gummies. If you're worried about getting your children to, to take this at all by the spoonfuls, uh, you don't have to worry about that because well, some kids, I'm sure, I'm sure, but um, most kids don't mind it at all. It's got a, um, a candy, juicy kind of flavor. I can't think of what it would be, but it's not like a Dimatap grape. You know, some kids don't like that. It's different. My granddaughter will willingly drink it from a mason jar. <laughs> so It's just starting to give me some sizzle along the edges here. So I'm going to give it another stir or two, and like I said, after it starts, maybe I didn't, after it starts to simmer, you can go ahead and think that it'll take about 45 minutes. My husband just texted me and asked me if I wanted to go somewhere at 6 or 6.15. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm busy. I have to make dinner right after this. I don't mean to be like that, but I was, wasn't I? Okay, I just noticed that where this recipe came from, the Happy Healthy Mama, um, says that you can keep it in your refrigerator in a glass container. I use a mason jar and it lasts up to eight weeks. So there you have it She's got a good website if you've not heard of her you might want to look her up something else I should have told you you don't have to put in just a chunk you could also do the you know grating so I've also used the kind that you get from the store, but I think the fresh you know actual plant is best so just kind of simmering, you know, it looks like I need to get, move my pan a little so we spread the love. Um, just does this and I've got a timer on, so I've got 38 minutes left. When this reduces down by half, it'll be a little bit thicker, you got to strain it. So this is how I do it. I've got a cheesecloth, you get them in the baking section at the, like near the chips chocolate chips and nuts and stuff at the grocery store, you can get it at Walmart for a whole lot less than the grocery store. But it, this is the package I bought probably five years ago. I just little, use little pieces now and then because I don't do any cheese making or anything yet. So anyway, I put it in a jar. I think this is a pint. I poked it down with a butter knife so it reached down, you know, fairly far. And then I screwed the lid on and I will pour it in there and this lid will keep that mesh from falling down all the way and my losing what I've already strained. You don't want any solids in this when it's done. All right, I emptied the pan into the jar and what's left of the solids are in the mesh, the cheesecloth, and I squeezed and I got just a little bit more out. Try not to let it actually fall in, you know, with the syrup. So this is the last of the syrup, and in it goes. So now, it's about a third of a jar. I gotta add the honey, because you don't cook the honey, you add it at the last minute <laughs> when you're done. You know what, I'm gonna let this cool down just a skosh more, I don't want it to be that hot. All right, it's cool enough that it's just warm now, so I can put the uh, organic, not organic, raw honey in here, and it'll raise the level up too. Honey is in, and I need to go ahead and mix it up. Just, and I'm using, you know, a silicone deep enough to reach the bottom. Put on a lid and stick it in your fridge for up to eight weeks or so, she says. So, before you give it to your kids, something that I always did was just give it a good shake just to make sure that nothing's layered in there and it's all mixed together. It's very sticky, very sweet now. And any little one, over one year, don't give it to children under a year old. 
or people that are very, very ill, you know, so there you go. <laughs> ask your doctor, ask your pediatrician, what are your ideas about this? That kind of thing. If you got this far, thanks for watching. And, oh, date your containers so you know how long it's been in there. Because if you're like me, you will forget. Yeah, I think it was in the summer. <laughs> so, and when you get close to running out, make more. If you got this far, thank you. If you have not yet subscribed, I would love it if you did. Give me a thumbs up and a like, too, if you want. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow.